Iran. The statement from the White House reads as follows. The Egyptian people have been told that there was a transition of authority, but it's not yet clear that this transition is immediate, meaningful, or sufficient. We therefore urge the Egyptian government to move swiftly to explain the changes that have been made and to spell out in clear and unambiguous language the step-by-step -step process that will lead to democracy and the representative government that the Egyptian people seek. Paddy Golhane is in Washington, D.C. for us, and so the White House seems to be turning up the pressure on President Mubarak. President Barack Obama began talking about Egypt on Thursday, saying we were watching history unfold. If the history was made, it appears that even the Obama administration isn't clear exactly what President Mubarak was saying. Putting out a statement after huddling with his national security team, the president says it's not clear if the transition that's promised will be immediate, meaningful, and sufficient. And he went on to say that too many Egyptians remain unconvinced that the government is serious about a genuine transition to democracy. To that end, the Obama administration is laying out exactly what it wants to see the Egyptian government do, which is to open up negotiations to a broad group of the protesters, to lift the emergency law, to take concrete steps to a free and fair election. Now, these are the demands we've heard from the Obama administration in just the last few days, but the rhetoric behind them was much stronger. President Barack Obama saying to the protesters in Egypt, you have a friend in the United States. Well, a number of European leaders have also been vocal, trying to tread that very fine diplomatic line uh, that we're seeing the White House treading. Paul Brennan is in London with us. Uh, Paul, with some more detail on what the world leaders have been saying in Europe. Well, it's been quite difficult because, of course, many of the European leaders take their lead from the White House and what America are saying. And there was confusing signals coming out from America with the expectation that was put out by the White House and the CIA yesterday that last night's announcement would be that uh, President Mubarak was stepping down. Now, the response uh, from the Western leaders, uh, the Europeans at least, uh, again, still cautious. Germany's uh, Foreign Minister, Guido Westerdahl, Westerdahl has um, said he was at the UN in New York. He said the speech of President Mubarak did not show any new perspectives. It was not a step forward. He went on to say the protesters in Egypt have a right to be heard so that their wish for freedom, democracy, a future, and a change will be realized. We've also heard as well from the British Foreign Minister, William Hague, who has been on a whistle-stop tour of the Middle East over the last five days. He spoke in Bahrain. We'll hear from him in a second. First, though, the French President, Nicolas Sarkozy, who was on French television last night, ostensibly a domestic politics TV program, but he was asked about the uh, situation in Egypt as well. It's inevitable. What I wish from the bottom of my heart for the nascent Egyptian democracy is that they take the time to create political parties, structures, principles, which will allow them to find the path of democracy and not the path of another form of dictatorship, religious dictatorship. As unfortunately it's been the case in Iran after the departure of the Shah, and all we'll be able to do us, the Western democracies, is to help Egypt, to help Tunisia, go towards democracy in order to avoid falling into a system which would be worse. It's our moral duty to do so, but it's also our interest. We're studying very closely what the President and the Vice President of Egypt have said. It is not immediately clear what powers are being handed over and what the full implications are. Uh, we think the solution to this has to be over by the Egyptian people <coughs> themselves. All we want in the United Kingdom is for them to be able to settle their own differences in a peaceful and democratic way. And that's why we've called from the beginning of this crisis uh, for an urgent but orderly transition to a more broadly based government in Egypt. And in the meantime, we look to the Egyptian authorities to protect the right to peaceful protest. Paul, all a very delicate diplomatic dance going on with all these people. Clearly, is there actually anything that Europe and its leaders can do in this circumstance? Well, there's very little. I mean, the Americans, of course, have a $1.3 billion uh, military aid budget, which they can curtail or somehow uh, affect uh, to, put into, to bring influence to bear on Egypt. As far as the Europeans go, really, their hands are tied. They, uh, the scope for sanctions is quite limited. We're talking perhaps about freezing of assets, 
Uh, we're also talking about the potential uh, withdrawing of visas to make travel more difficult for Mubarak and his close associates. Uh, but really, it is quite difficult. And what we haven't had yet is any reaction, uh, although I can see that the uh, Foreign Minister, uh, William Hay, is giving some reaction at the moment. He's doing some media interviews now that we've had that statement uh, from the military, communique number two. Uh, we'll have more from the British Foreign Minister, William Hay, I expect, in, within the next hour, speaking uh, and available to us here on Al Jazeera. All right, Paul Brennan in London. Thanks for that. We'll get back to you when we know what William Hay has had to say. In the meantime, let's find out what the people have been saying with the latest on the social media and the tweets and the Facebook uh, pages. Let's go out to Bernard Smith at the Egypt desk for some reaction to Mubarak's speech, and probably a little bit too early, uh, Bernard, for reaction to the army speech. Yeah, it is, Tamor. I mean, many of the protesters uh, that we've been seeing in the last hour, they were up all night on Liberation Square. And in the early hours, the internet traffic slowed up a bit um, as they grabbed some sleep. Uh, but those uh, that can and are able to are now back online. And as Hosni Mubarak is still the president, many of the messages on Twitter and Facebook reveal frustration and anger. Now, uh, here's Mossad. He says, today is the third Friday of our revolution. The first was bloody, the second was festive and the third should be decisive. Uh, and Sally Sammy's in Liberation Square. She says people are reading poetry there at the moment. Momentum is picking up. She says, Yalla free Kyrians, join us here. And a lot of tweeters have also been uh, posting other messages, generally angry and frustrated, as I mentioned earlier on. Now, all sorts of footage from Egypt has been uploaded onto YouTube in the past few weeks as well. Some of it dramatic, some of it disturbing, and some of it moving. Mm -hmm. Uh, this video appeared last night, posted on Amir Reid's YouTube channel. It was shot apparently using volunteers over the past weeks, and they're singing that they went down to the square and they're not going back. We made those who weren't listening listen to us. It is a very moving video. Now, online, there are more images and reports that our correspondents are sending in from across Egypt. Check those out on the live blog on our website, aljazeera.net forward slash English. Our colleagues at the web desk are updating that 24 hours a day. Of course, we're expecting a dramatic day across Egypt, and we'll be keeping an eye on all the social media sites here on the Egypt desk. But for now, Taymor, it's back to you. Well, thank you.